Thank you very much. I am particularly grateful for your presence here today and several friends who have uh, come and especially I am grateful for their presence. But all the more I thank you for being here because of the uh, major competition uh, that we had uh, at, this, uh, at this hour. Um, as the airlines say, uh, we know you had a choice and uh, we thank you for choosing to fly with this session. And, um, and flying is a very appropriate term both for this session and for our major competition. Um, it's also appropriate that we're doing this at this particular time because um, this is a National 8th Air Force Week. We're right in the midst of, of that week. And of course with uh, Myron King, we have a pilot and crew who flew with the 8th Air Force. As uh, Tom Post mentioned, um, of course, I, uh, in the main, have written articles and books that have dealt with the American Civil War in one way or another. Once I started writing uh, this book, The Wars of Myron King, frequently I was asked, why have you changed uh, to a World War II topic? The answer is that it came about uh, largely by chance. After my last book, it's amazing how much difficulty it is to get things right to read now in these uh, later years. <laughs> um, <clears throat> after my last book, Nashville, The Western Confederacy's Final Gamble, which um, recounted and analyzed the Spring Hill Franklin Nashville campaign of 1864, I thought it might be nice for a change uh, to get away from the Civil War. I thought uh, even got away from history. I thought it might be fun to write a novel. Now don't misunderstand me. Um, I don't want to bring down the wrath of any uh, historians who decry fiction, <laughs> but I, I do read fiction, usually authors from years ago. Um, I'm more likely to pick up some Thomas Hardy novel or Ernest Hemingway, Cervantes, uh, Joseph Heller. Um, and probably I've read Catch-22 at least three times, maybe four. <laughs> anyway, I decided I would try a novel and that I would set it in World War II, uh, focusing as my main character on a fighter pilot. And I had uh, read uh, written, um, had read quite a bit uh, as well, and had written about 250 pages, I guess, when I thought about Myron King, a B-17 pilot in World War II. I knew that <clears throat> any pilot training with the Army Air Force in World War II went through the same procedure up to a point, and I thought that probably Myron could uh, help enlarge and uh, improve my understanding uh, of the process. So uh, I called him up and he was uh, very uh, gracious um, and I soon met with him. This was in September 2006 at his home. Now <clears throat> we talked about his flight training, um, primary training, basic training, advanced training, and then we got off on his flying the B-17. I don't recall whether I brought it up, I well might have because the B-17 has always fascinated me, or whether he brought it up, but I certainly enjoyed it. And then we began talking about his rather incredible experience in Russian-controlled territory. And as I went home that evening, after spending three or four hours with him as I was driving home, I found myself thinking, I want to know more about this story. I want to know the whole story. I want as much detail as, as possible. And I thought, this is the book I should be writing. And I should be writing it right now. After all, I could always go back to the novel. And even if it's never finished, so what? 
it is, after all, fiction. But Myron's story is reality. It is gripping and significant reality. And I felt like I had to do it. Now, often in the years when I was teaching, I would tell my upper division and graduate students in history that a history book is only as good as the quality of the sources on which it is based, together with the integrity and the skill of the author who employs those sources. And I can say that for this book, I had excellent sources. Uh, first, foremost, of course, my interviews with Myron. In the latter part of 2006 and through probably two-thirds, roughly, of 2007, I met with him upon ten occasions, uh, always two to three hours and sometimes more than that. And without his input, uh, certainly this book would not have been written. Two other members of the King crew also assisted me. Now, most of the crew is deceased. Um, when I started work on this book, one other uh, was still alive, but physically impaired to the point that he was not able to help. But I did receive help from the navigator, Richard Lowe. Um, Lowe wrote two letters um, describing various experiences and responding to questions that I had posed for him. And uh, we talked a couple of times over the phone. And you will find, as you read the book, that I have quoted him a number of times. And then the third crew member who contributed was Phil Rhino, the ball turret gunner. Now, some of you may not know precisely what the ball turret is on a B-17, but that is sometimes referred to as the belly turret. It's the uh, one that's on the bottom of the plane and just back of where the trailing edge uh, contacts the fuselage. Well, Phil Rhino wrote a couple of letters responding to my questions, and I talked to him two or three times over the phone. And it was um, during either the second or third conversation that uh, we had that uh, he said, and these are, I think, very close to his exact words. Oh, by the way, I wonder if you would have any interest in seeing the diary that I kept when we started overseas. <laughs> well, here I am talking to, uh, to a primary source, and he tells me, uh, would you like to see my diary? You know, that's like holding out a piece of fish in front of a cat. Um, I pounced, and uh, immediately I came to attention, yes, sir, I certainly do want to see that diary. So he packaged it up and mailed it to me. Um, through the years, as you might assume, I've read a great many diaries. Now, a lot of them are interesting, but not necessarily beneficial for the purposes that I have in mind. And then you find some that are just really helpful. And Phil Rhino's diary fell into that latter category. Um, <clears throat> uh, just for example, on every mission, as he told about every mission they flew, he would begin by noting the identification number of the B-17 they flew that day. And then he would also put down the target for that day. And whether or not, for whatever reason, uh, they wound up bombing a secondary target. He would also note how many hours they were in the air. Uh, usually it was six to nine or ten hours. And how much of that time they were on oxygen. And then he would write a paragraph, usually more than a paragraph. Some